Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Hope everybody's well. I've just been away on holiday for uh, most of the week with the family. School holidays here in New Zealand. And I was good, I left my computer at home. So, uh, a bit of downtimes in the evening. So I had a sketchbook with me, so I just did a second brain dump of tips and tricks, etc. for industrial designers and SolidWorks. So I'm just going to roll through these quickly. And I will put this PDF online, and you can find the link in the um, in the description of this video. Right. Okay, trim issues. If you've used surface trims before, you know you can have a standard trim where one surface body will trim a second surface body, or you can have a mutual trim where you pick two or more input surfaces and then you you can pick the pieces you want to keep or remove problem with this with solid work sometimes is if say you had four bodies uh, and it will end up with you do something further up the tree and you go back into the feature and there's only three uh, selections in the keep selections so it's forgotten one of them but it won't flag it up as an error so you don't know that that feature has failed so you've got to go through and troubleshoot your part. So what I've started doing is not using mutual trims anymore. I know you end up with more features in the tree, but it's much easier to troubleshoot and go through, uh, especially if you're working on comp. This is just a really simple model here that I've just illustrated. Um, but if you're working on something very complicated, it, it can get confusing. Offset surface. If you've ever tried offsetting surfaces, uh, several surfaces, like a quilt of surfaces, whoops, pro -E. And say you had seven surfaces in the body that you offset and the result had like nine or ten and it had created like an area of cur high curvature, it created smaller patches. What you can do is you offset the um, surfaces in two batches and then you tie those values together the global variable so when you change one um, both offsets will be the same amount and then you can trim and knit them together afterwards although i would recommend trying to fix and troubleshoot the 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 problem first which is probably something the curvature is too tight or there's some weirdness and some multiple edges or something like that but it's you know if you're, if you're working on a quick concept model yeah why not okay surface loft uh, surface loft is unlike a boundary uh, surface which you can interchange the direction 1 and direction 2 in a surface loft it's it's direction sensitive so if you swap these profiles to be the guides and the guides to be the profiles you end up with a actually a different uh, resultant surface so sometimes it pays to swap these around because you may get a better result Boundary surface, uh, if you end up, like you can see the curvature graph here, there's a little bit of a wiggle there. Sometimes if you're using curvature continuous on, on a boundary, you can end up with major wiggles because it forces this curvature continuous uh, constraint. Then make sure that your input geometry, your curves, your edges, etc. have curvature continuous constraints themselves which people probably do most of the time, but you can get away in SOLIDWORKS if you change this boundary here, curvature to face, if you change that to tangent, like I tried in this yet, all that happens here is that little wobble there goes away. Uh, if your input geometry is curvature continuous, quite often in SOLIDWORKS, your resultant surfaces will be uh, curvature continuous along the boundaries. Although in SOLIDWORKS there's no explicit tool to check your tolerance for curvature continuity along a boundary, you can use visual tools like a curvature comb and the zebra stripe. Check the surface flow and the flow of the, the stripes in a zebra. But you, if you're looking for tangent continuity, you can use the deviation tool, which will give you an angle from zero of the deviation from zero across a boundary that's supposed to be tangent. Extrude surface. This actually was something that cropped up in one of my earlier videos this year. I didn't realise you could just pick a surface and extrude it, which is really handy because in this case this was a, a hexagonal pattern 
across a curved face and I was selecting this whole surface in a 3D sketch and go convert entities which took forever to convert each of these entities. So instead you can just pick the face and then go extrude you, uh, you select a direction vector and you can add draft as well. So that was quite a time saver. Uh, delete body, keep body. I don't normally use delete body and keep bodies uh, halfway up a feature tree because I've found in the past they can force things to rebuild above the delete body when you're rolling back. Um, it can be a pain. So I, I keep them down the bottom. So you go insert body, delete or keep bodies. Normally it's much easier now just to select the body you want to keep rather than the ones you want to delete because that might vary as you go back and edit the model, end up with more um, helper surfaces, etc, more tool surfaces. Solid body will not mirror. Had this a few times crop up, normally on more complicated parts like the one you can see here. So what I do in that case is you select the mid plane face and you, you insert a, a move face, just a little amount like 0.5 millimeters across the mirror plane and then insert surface cut with the mirror plane and then try mirroring the body and more often than not that will fix the problem but again I'd recommend going in and trying to find what the what's causing this problem um, if you've if you've got a, a surface that's supposed to come in and be normal to the center line or your mirror plane and it's not quite normal when you offset that 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 tolerance will get that little error will get magnified um, and things don't sit quite on the on the plane, so yeah, it's worth checking. This is slightly random, but with a with a filled surface, if you've got four boundaries, if you have optimized surface on, the flow of the ISO curves will follow as if it was a boundary surface. If you want to instead uh, make it an overbuilt surface, turn optimized surface off. Quite often if you're, if you're working on something quick and you've got some big curvature changes then this works better. A chord width fillet. So if you want to define the width between like the chord, the distance for the chord and a fillet, that option is available to you if you um, make the fillet a, a face fillet. Uh, it's, not it's not an option under just the edge fillet. Okay, a more advanced kind of chord blend, I guess. So if you want to create a blend where the edges of the rails of the blend are constant distance out from the um from the sharp edge before the blend goes in, then you just insert surface and you use the pipe function there. So you pick an edge, um, sweep a pipe along there, and then use that pipe to trim out surfaces and then create a blend with a with a boundary surface or with a loft and you can also like in this case you can see this blend spans multiple surfaces on the outside and one surface on the inside so to to make your your input pipe smooth oh sorry not smooth but with no surface breaks along it like you can see there which puts extra edges in when it's when it's when it's used as a trim tool as you insert a 3D sketch and you convert entities the edge here and then you convert them using fit spline into a single spline. 3D sketches versus projected sketches. I noticed this on a few seating products I've worked on where I've sat down with the designers and we've tweaked these curves endlessly like side elevation and then front elevation and then when you end up projecting them the curve looks really odd and in 3D space when you look at it a three quarter view. So I found it much uh, much easier to work directly on curves in 3D space using a 3D sketch and it's easier to resolve some of these oddities. Variable chamfer. You create a variable fillet first and then you build a boundary or a loft surface through those these and those edges. Uh, inside the the boundary surface you can turn off merge tangent faces so the surface will break have a break in it uh, here and here which I, I far prefer rather than having one smooth big uh, surface all the way through here especially if you're putting fillets on it downstream and then you can if this is a surface body you can trim 
will delete face and then knit the the uh, variable chamfer in or if it's a surface body you can try replace face or you can uh, insert it as a surface cut and trim the fillet off uh, move face clearances quite often we model things face to face and then figure out tolerances later so depending on materials and etc everything else so it's quite handy just use move face to push faces around extrude a 3d sketch instead of using a ruled surface you can select entities convert entities into a single sketch and then fit spline and then you can extrude that 3D sketch, you just pick a vector for it to extrude. Um, that might be alright, because that's normal to the extrusion direction. But if you wanted to have um, use some of the functionality that is available on a ruled surface, um, like the, the angle to a vector, etc., then you can use the edge of that 3D sketch extruded surface, which now has no surface breaks in it is your input edge for the ruled surface. That sounds like double handling and extra features I know, but ruled surfaces, so you can't um, pick a sketch as the input has to have an edge. So doing this, we're just making a series of edges, as you can see here, one, two, three, just making it into a single entity along there. Okay, I think this is my last one. Lofted ribbon surface. If you want to create a ribbon surface with a constant distance um, from an edge, you can create, so in this case I think I've got yeah, three, three profiles, which are sketches, and one guide curve, which is the edge here, and this outside edge here, the free edge, that kind of wanders around and the distance will vary um, from this guide edge. So what you do is you create the surface first, this loft, with your profiles then you create a swept pipe again as I showed earlier and then you can use the swept pipe to trim back the lofted surface which means you end up with a ribbon surface that is a constant distance away from this edge and you can if you you can add as many profiles as you need to to suit the design intent right so I hope that was helpful a short video from me hopefully and um, yeah, if you find this useful, please like the video and subscribe. And as I said, I'll put a link to the PDF uh, for download in the, in the uh, description of this video. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.